strong midwives associations are able to advocate for the midwifery profession, midwives, newborns, women, and all people who are pregnant and giving birth. Advocating is not always easy. Training may be needed to effectively advocate for our profession and the rights of parents and newborns, online and in conversation with decision makers and governments. First, what do we mean when we say advocacy? It's really simple. Advocacy refers to sharing a message and encouraging others to believe in that message. These can be shared with communities or organisations in order to mobilise resources to support our cause. This sharing can happen online through social media, in one-to-one -one conversations, in group meetings, at events, and through radio and television channels, newspapers, blogs, and opinion editorials. So why is advocacy work important for midwives? Midwives and the women, babies, and families they care for in every corner of the world face varying injustices and inequalities in addition to the day-to-day -day challenges experienced by many healthcare professionals. Often, these inequities stem from the fact that most midwives are women and their work, for the most part, serves women. Sometimes, the issues midwives face stem from confusing midwifery with nursing and the hierarchical structure of many health systems. Very often, the issues relate to a lack of recognition for women's rights. Speaking up about relevant national, regional and global issues or shining the light on positive or new developments and encouraging others to do the same can and will result in change. The change may be as small as securing new training manuals for a rural health centre or as large as a change in government policy that improves maternity services for women or increases the autonomy of midwives. For example, one of our midwives associations heard from its members that midwives in many hospitals with COVID-19 patients weren't being provided PPE. In response to this problem, the association wrote a letter to their country's Minister of Health asking him to ensure the provision of PPE to midwives. They emailed the letter to their contacts, midwives, women's groups and family and friends, asking them to also send the letter to the health minister. Soon, the minister was inundated with letters from individuals and organisations from all corners of the country. This resulted in the Midwives Association being sent a series of shipments of PPE for their members. While the problem each advocacy initiative is aiming to resolve may be different, there are certain principles each initiative should follow. A clear message outlining your problem, a proposed solution to your problem, a clear reason why solving the problem is important, a visual image or graphic to accompany your message, a plan outlining how and where your message will be shared. Your message should be short and to the point. It should briefly describe your problem in a way that demonstrates its impact. For example, if your problem is that midwives are being denied PPE while other frontline healthcare professionals have access to it, you may write, Midwives in this country do not have the same access to personal protective equipment as other frontline healthcare professionals. This puts us and the women and babies we care for at a higher risk of infection spread, extreme illness and even death. Your message should also clearly outline the solution to your problem. Let's take the example from the ICM Midwives Association again. You've already identified the problem and described its impact. Now, let's add a proposed solution. We, name of association, call on the Ministry of Health to provide 10,000 disposable gowns, masks and gloves to our association for the distribution of midwives on the front line of the COVID-19 pandemic. If possible, choose a photo or better yet, a video to strengthen your message. This might look like an executive member of your team reading the message in a video or a photo that characterizes the messages. In our example, this might be a photo of midwives standing outside of a healthcare center without the PPE they require to do their job safely. 
a visual will ensure your message is more intriguing and shareable. When deciding how and where to share your message, you should start by going back to your proposed solution. In our example, the proposed solution is the government providing PPE to midwives associations for distribution to midwives. In order to see this solution through, we need to ensure the right people in the right government departments are exposed to this message. With this in mind, here is a breakdown of popular ways in which individuals and groups share messages. First, start by considering your own network. Do you know anyone in the Ministry of Health or other relevant government departments to whom you can send your message? What about members of the media? Do you have contacts in radio, television or newspapers that should be informed about your concerns? What about partner health organisations and women's groups that can assist in sharing the message with their networks? These organisations might even be willing to co-author your message in a show of solidarity. Leverage the members in your organisation. Send a message to the individuals in your own network and ask them to reshare the message on public platforms like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Do your members have contacts in the media they can share with you? Does your organisation have a Facebook, Twitter or Instagram account? where the messages can be posted and then reshared? We understand that crafting the perfect advocacy message can be challenging. That's why we've created a couple of tools in addition to this video to help you out. You can find our advocacy toolkit under the advocacy section of the ICM website. If your advocacy needs are related to the current COVID-19 pandemic, we've drafted messages to help you out visit the COVID-19 section on the ICM website to learn more. For ICM members, feel free to reach out to our communications team with your advocacy questions. We encourage our members to use the tips in this video to create and share messages in the hopes of improving the health of women, their newborns, their families and their communities. Thank you for watching.